a trade-off that the inorganic beings get to farm us and get to feed off our emotions and the old seers um, get a kind of immortality and a kind of total power and total control and they get to avoid the um, terrifying uh, revelation of of death of their karmic um, upcoming or comeuppance um, by sustaining this illusory realm in which they can be lords and masters and I know that, I mean this is a very tricky tricky area and it's something that I'm going into in my my very last podcast because it, it it doesn't get talked about very much and yet there's a lot of clues to suggest that outlandish as this scenario is that it, it may well be closer to the truth than any of these conspiracy theories and, and, and Illuminati agendas that I mean, within that light, the, the, all of these narratives would just be more distraction. They would just be more spellcraft to divert us from the true situation, which is that reality itself has, has been hijacked and is being controlled and that we're not really um, part of what we think of as reality at all. It's like we've been contained in this bubble, in this dream world. Um, and... Uh, whatever we have to do to to wake up to that, uh, that would seem to be a natural. It seems to me that power, um, there's a kind of natural uh, system in the universe where power assumes dominance wherever it can, and it, it's a way of testing um, those of us who are actually really able to claim our power as individual beings. Uh, creative divine beings will naturally begin to move outside of this 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 illusory realm that we've been confined to, um, and and I think that that's a very very few of us is what I feel. I mean, we're talking about the world situation and all the rest of it, and I just wonder, you know, we take so much for granted, even you know people like you and I who go into these areas, we discover more and more strange ideas, but and we try to weave them together, as I say, into a narrative, into a paradigm, but we can't, really. All we can do is kind of extend and, and transform the one we, we've already been handed down to as children. And it's predicated on these basic assumptions which we can't really question. Um, but I think that we absolutely have to question everything. Yes. And so one thing I'd question, and which I do in my last podcast, is do we even know that there's six billion individuals on this planet? How do we know that there aren't just a very, very small number of us who are being farmed for our magical ability and kept asleep as, as magical beings by these secret hidden sorcerers? Um, and that the, the rest of the world and all these billions of people that we think are real are just created as an illusion, as a matrix to distract us and keep us from finding each other and organizing. And I know how utterly outlandish that sounds, <laughs> but I, I, I've reached a point in life where I really have to consider not just anything, but I mean, I think only, only the really truly outlandish scenarios are actually adequate to um, kind of uh, deal with what we're undergoing now as a species or certainly what I'm undergoing as an individual, um, I have to reach for ever larger and more unusual um, interpretations of reality simply in order to um, find a context for the, the stuff that I'm experiencing personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's very interesting. And I think that that's also a, a carrot, if you will, that kind of keeps you looking into new areas there is an excitement that of, of, of a mystery that cannot well at least is very very difficult to kind of solve and really really know in that sense but I, I i understand what you're saying definitely i mean i've had that experience many many times the kind of uh, truman show sense of reality i'm walking around in a set the bodies are sims or even you know clones walking around for my own Maybe not enjoyment, but the, the, but you know there the, it's an empty shell. It looks real, you know, but it's not really. Uh, and I think that that's also is actually a a process in a way um, that that we go through. But then at the end, of course, that might be the ultimate reality, uh, as, as you pointed out. We simply don't know at the, at this point. Um, I think that mm. um, I, I would agree with you in that sense that that um, they the the pretend 
the potential idea that we are being controlled by another race is very, very plausible in that sense. I, I would probably not go down the scary route, though. My my idea that I got when you were describing this, that uh, I get the sensation that we are these beings. We are the higher person, personalities, spirits, whatever you want to call it, on another plane. But we are we are playing the computer game here. We have gone into uh, this interface, if you will, and we are now experiencing a lesser... Um, reality a limit a more limited reality and and it's nothing more than a computer game uh, i don't know if these beings are bored so they just want to escape for a while or what the what the score is here uh but that's another interesting idea and i think that it dovetails a, a little bit with your idea Elas, but it might not be as uh as scary i guess <laughs> i don't know yeah well I, I mean perhaps not as malevolent anyway i think that there's nothing more terrifying to our personal identities than than this idea that you know, that nothing is real, that there's, there's absolutely nothing uh, that we can depend upon, um, and indeed that we don't really exist in the way that we think we exist, that our identities are actually these constructions um, that have been designed to enslave us. Um, I don't think there's any way of avoiding the the terror of that revelation, but I, I think it would be a mistake to assume that simply because something is frightening and threatening, it means that it's malevolent. Um, yeah, I, I don't really acknowledge the existence of evil in the universe. I, once again, I think this is to with disowning an aspect of ourselves, and so it becomes autonomous, and then and then that is to all intents and purposes an evil presence, but it is um, it is only, once again, uh, our own, it's being filtered through our own identity selves that, that has rendered it that way. Essentially, the universe is energy. Uh, everything is energy. So you might have areas of blockage or even distortion that results from blockage, but how does that give rise to evil as such? I, I don't really accept that. I think that's a concatenation of the human mind once mm-hmm. again. Mm. Do, do, I, mean, I don't know if you've heard our programs that we've done with uh, Jim Elvidge. He talks about this idea that our reality is is uh, is literally a program running in that sense, a, a matrix esque type of uh, scenario. Um, but he elaborated on a few interesting ideas that is related to the fact that science might actually be able to kind of uh, solve this appear beneath the veil of this of the programmed reality he mentioned a few examples of of a few uh, uh, par- particle accelerators and things like this that is discover the uh, um the the clock cycle if you will of the uh, of reality basically where we can see that something else it, it isn't just you know not something isn't right here so to speak do you, uh, i don't know if you heard that or not but do you think that mm-hmm. that we will ever come closer to something like that, a revelation like that, in terms of science, do you think that this puzzle, I guess, can be solved, uh, and we can discover or learn more about the the world beyond and these beings that you're talking about? Yeah, I think we're definitely on the verge of that, and I think that science, once again, is um, it's. I think it's um, not exactly a red herring, but it can be in the sense that science is allowing us to acknowledge possibilities and discover our own potential, if you will, but that it's not actually a route to the truth in itself. A science, of course, just means knowledge. And um, knowledge is a relationship between things. And so I think that science is a way, as I say, to formulate new possibilities, but not a way to actually relate to those possibilities because if we're using science it always seems to lead to technology doesn't it Mm, yeah and that's where the problem comes in i think not that technology is wrong in in itself but that if um if it if we forget that it's just a tool for learning i've used the metaphor of the abacus you know an abacus is a way to learn to count and then once you've learned to count you do put away the abacus and i think all technologies of this nature um, and that would include the internet which is a very obvious example of a technology which seems entirely benevolent and which is empowering us as individuals and allowing us to connect but it may um, not last much longer it may get taken away tomorrow for all we know and and so the thing to remember is that um, this is anything that we can accomplish through instruments uh, we can achieve 
with the human body itself. The human body is actually capable of anything we can do technologically. I'm, I'm convinced of that. That would include teleportation and time travel and you name it. Because the human body is a, a vessel that's created by consciousness, then it can actually return to its original form as consciousness, which would, as a vehicle, would be plasma, I suppose, a body of light. And that, um, I think that that's always been our only true option as human beings you know the only worthwhile pursuit is to develop the body of light to develop the energy body and to enter into a consciousness which isn't um localized to the personal identity and which it isn't um contained within the entropy barrier of death we actually can travel beyond the gates of death within the the energy body and so the fact that we're on the verge of this, these kind of possibilities through science lets me know that our time has run out in the sense because if <clears throat> if the individuals we've seen running our world who who are who don't take responsibility for their own darkness, who are simply interested in self aggrandizement and power and control and in avoiding at all costs um the truth of themselves and I mean, that's my perception. We're talking about networks of, of power that include satanic ritual abuse and pedophilia and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. I think it's fair to assume that these are not enlightened individuals. So um, right. if, we think about, if we think about these people attaining that sort of power, well, at that point, I think divine intervention becomes an inevitability because um, it's like, it's just too much. I don't really know how to describe it. I get just this instinctive sense that um, something has to give at that point. Um, it, it, it's We've run out of time because if we don't find this power within ourselves, then those who are least worthy of it are going to wield it, and they will, of course, destroy us, destroy everything. Because... Uh, uh, and will they wield it through the aid of, of science and technology? Yeah, well, I think that they have been. I think that the mummy, um, the Egyptians had, you know, this, this very mysterious technology, and the mummification was part of that. Um, it was a part of an awareness that there would be the possibility in the future of cloning, of creating a, a physical replica of a body through the DNA, and that some of these Egyptian pharaohs, who would be the old seers of Carlos Castaneda, were fully aware of this possibility and that they've been waiting in the um, astral realms if you will in their energy bodies for the time where these pharaohs could be cloned and then they could actually literally reincarnate and, and be uh, able to navigate the physical realm again i think we're talking about some really uh, mind-boggling uh, concepts that yes. are at work behind the scenes here which do involve technology and sorcery and a blend of the two and it is um these these individuals they don't have any choice henry because they have um basically driven themselves into a corner they can't simply surrender because they've gone too far and for them to surrender to spirit to, to life whatever they would then have to deal with all the consequences of their actions and that is is, is, is terrifying for them. So the only chance they have is to somehow maintain their power base and have a simulation of immortality mm -hmm. for as long as possible and did to you, keep keep the truth out. And it, mm -hmm. Did you see that uh, piece of news where this uh, team of scientists successfully had extracted uh, DNA from a mummy? Did you see that? Yeah, I heard about that, absolutely. Do you think that also has something to do with it, that they might uh, potentially b want to try to clone uh, whatever it was that was enwrapped here in the shroud? Well, yeah, I, I think, I mean, again, it's, it's tricky. One doesn't want to get distracted by these um, discoveries because they can, they become so fascinating that one can just lose the, the thread of what really matters. But I, I really think that, yes, this kind of stuff is going on, uh, unimaginable. Uh, manipulations of technology and sorcery over thousands of years and that there is this incredibly elaborate intricate uh, agenda which is kind of theater really the armageddon theater um that is playing out uh, using absolutely everything at their disposable disposal and that the 